let's go ahead and work on some of the harder problems when we're solving linear systems. And for this next problem, you'll notice that I have x equals to 3y, 3y for my first equation, and it's not written in the proper order here. So in order to fix that, I'll take this 3y and move it to the left-hand side. And if I do that, I get x minus 3y equals to 0. So you'll notice that we want the x variable first, the y variable second, and we want the constant on the right-hand side there. And if I take a look at my second equation here, it's not written in the, the right form. So um, I can look at this y here, and I can look at this 14, and I would just uh, switch those two terms there. So if I bring that positive 14 to the left-hand side, I get negative 14. The 5x remains, and if I move the positive y to the right-hand side, I get a negative y. And then I would just rewrite that over here just below my first equation. So I have a 5x minus a y equals to negative 14. So that's step number one. Uh, you want to rearrange uh, the equation so that you have the x variables first, the y variables second, and you always want the constants on the right-hand side of the equation there. All right, so that's the first step here, and you'll notice that that's still not enough. We still have to do a little bit more work here. Uh, I notice I have a five here, right? So a very good strategy is what can you do the first equation so that you have a five as a leading coefficient as well? So what you can do is you can multiply the first equation by five. So if I distribute this five onto the first equation, I now get five x, so five times x is five x, and then five times negative three is negative 15, so negative 15 y, and finally five times zero is gonna be zero. And then from there, I can just rewrite the second equation just below the first equation, all right? So you'll notice that we've already um, applied, uh, we've, already, we've already kind of rearranged the equations multiple times here, and uh, we're almost there, but uh, what we need to do next here is uh, we have to ask ourselves, how can I eliminate the variables here? And what you wanna do here, if you look at your equations here, uh, you probably want to subtract both the equations, right? You wanna subtract. So let's see if we can do this in our head so without rewriting this equation again. So I have, I have a 5x minus a positive 5x, right? So 5x minus 5x, that would just give you zero so that the x's just cancel off. And then I have a negative 15y minus a, po uh, a negative y, right? So I have a negative 15y minus a negative y, right? So if I subtract those two y variables vertically, uh, this is what it will look like. So it would be negative 15y plus y, which equals to negative 14y. So I have, if, once again, if I take care of that, uh, the y variables in that vertical column there, I would get a negative 14y. All right, so make sure you're good with that because what you're doing is you're, you're really uh, solving this part right here, right? Negative 15 minus a negative y. And then on this last column here, I have a zero and a negative 14. So it's really a zero minus a negative 14, which is gonna be positive 14. So I have a positive 14 on the right-hand side, and then I can divide both sides by negative 14, and that means y would equal to uh, negative one. All right, so uh, y equals to negative one, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to the very first equation here, and uh, my first equation here is this. So x equals to three y. And remember, y equals to negative one, so just plug that in for the y variable, and three times negative one is gonna be negative three. So my final answer here is gonna be negative three comma negative one. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bad. I did skip some steps on that last equation there, but uh, it's very similar to the questions on the very front page. Okay, let's do another problem similar to that level here where we might have to do, um, where we might have to move some of the terms around. So in the second equation here, um, let's take a look at this very first equation and uh, is that written in the correct form? And it's not. And what you wanna do is you want to uh, switch the negative 11 and the eight Y. And if I do that, I get a three X. And if I bring the eight Y to the other side, it becomes negative eight Y. And if I bring this negative 11 to the right-hand side, it becomes positive 11, all right? So the x variable first, the y variable second, and then the constant on the right-hand side. And then for my second equation here, uh, it's not written in the right form, but I can take this negative eight and move it to the other side. And if I do that, I get an x plus a six y, and that would equal to zero plus eight, which is gonna be positive eight on the right-hand side. All right, so that's kind of similar to the previous problem. While we have to kind of 
make sure the x variables and the y variables and the constants are all lined up vertically. And then uh, what I recommend next is I have a three here. And um, the goal is you wanna make sure that the constants are the same, right? So if there's a three in front of the x on the first equation, what can you do to the second equation so that you have a three on the x? Well, you can just multiply the second equation by a three. And if I do that, uh, three times x is gonna be three x. Three times six is gonna be positive eighteen uh, y. And then finally, three times eight is gonna be 24. And then what you can do next is I will rewrite my first equation just above my second equation. And you'll notice that the coefficients here are now the same. And then you have to ask yourself, uh, what can you do to eliminate the x variables? Do you add the equations or do you subtract them? Well, you're gonna subtract them, right? Because if you added the equations, you would get three x plus three x, which is six x, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna subtract the equations. Um, now, I didn't do this in the previous problem, but I'll go ahead and do this for this problem here. When you're subtracting, remember this minus sign is really distributing onto everything in the second equation here. So if I had to rewrite that, that would be negative 3x minus 18y equals to negative 24. And then you can write the first equation above exactly the same. And now I find that um, it's in a little bit in a better form here for you to eliminate the x variable here. And all you're really doing is you're just adding, you know, these two equations here. So uh, 3x plus negative 3x, that will give you zero, right? So 3x plus negative 3x is zero. And then I have a negative 8y plus a negative 18y. So that's the same thing as negative 8 minus 18. And that's going to give you negative 26 this will be negative 26y. And then you finally you have uh, this part right here, 11 minus 24. And 11 minus 24 is gonna be a negative 13. All right, so, uh, so far all the steps look correct and you can divide both sides by negative 26. The negative 26 is canceled off giving you the y and that's gonna give you positive one half. So y would equal to one half on that. All right, so after you get the one half, you wanna go back to the first equation here. And um, once again, this is my first equation here. And if I rewrite that over here, I get three X minus 11 equals to eight times Y and Y has a value of one half. All right, so now I have a three X minus 11 equals to four, eight times one half is four. And then I can take this negative 11, bring it to the other side. And that's gonna give me three X equals to 4 plus 11, 4 plus 11 is gonna be 15, and then you can divide both sides by three, and uh, x would equal to five. And finally, your final answer should be written in coordinate form, so this will be five and one half. And that's your final answer for that one. Yeah, so these kind of problems uh, on the second page of the homework, they're pretty good because you have to do uh, multiple steps to kind of make sure your equation is uh, your two equations are lined up correctly. And uh, let's take a look at the last one here on the second page. I have, um, what do I have here? I got four X plus three Y equals to one and I have three X plus two Y equals to two. Um, sorry, I don't think this is the last question on the second page, but the second to last question here. And uh, this one's a good one here because um, let me highlight the four and let me highlight the three there. So you wanna make sure that those two coefficients are the same, right? So this is almost similar to the least common multiple concept. So uh, how do you make those two, um, uh, those two uh, coefficients the same? Um, well, I can uh, make sure that the coefficient in front of the x is gonna be a 12. So what I can do here is I can multiply the first equation by three. And if I do that, three times four is gonna be 12 x. And then three times three is gonna be nine, so nine y. And finally, three times one is gonna be positive three. And for the uh, second equation, I can multiply everything by a four. So you're distributing the four onwards. And if I do that, I get 12 X plus, well, four times two is gonna be eight Y and four times two is gonna be positive eight. All right, so you'll notice that the uh, X variables here, they're, um, they have the same coefficient, which is 12. And uh, the question is, how can you eliminate the X variables? Would you add them or would you subtract them? Um, you would probably subtract. Um, okay, so if I subtract 12x minus 12x, uh, that will eliminate the x variables. 
and then I have uh, a positive 9y minus an 8y. So 9 minus 8 is going to be 1. So that's going to be a y variable there. So 1y. And finally, you have a 3 minus an 8. 3 minus 8 is going to be a negative 5. Okay, so y equals to negative 5 there. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the first equation here. Let me just highlight uh, this part right here. 4x plus 3y equals to 1. All right, now I'm going to solve for x here. So 4x plus three times the y variable, and y has a value of negative five, and that's gonna to equal to one. And then we just solve this equation here. So uh, four x plus, well, three times negative five is negative 15, and that's gonna to equal to one. And then I have a four x here, and then I can take this negative 15 and move it to the other side, so I have one plus 15. And that's gonna give me a four x equals to 16, and then divide both sides by four, and x would equal to positive four. So my final answer here is four comma negative five. All right, so that's a very good question for practice as well. All right, let's move on to uh, the next one here. And for this one here, uh, let's see what can we do for this particular problem here. Um, I'll change up the style just a little bit for this problem here. Let me see if I can tack the y variables first. Now you don't have to, but I just wanted to change up the style um, for this particular problem here. Um, there's a negative three there and a positive five, right? So the question is, um, how can you how can you make sure that the variables, or sorry, the coefficients in front of the the y variables, are the same? Okay, so you gotta think about the least common multiple, right? Uh, the least common multiple concept. So for three and five, I believe the least common multiple is gonna be a 15. So how do I change that three to a 15? Uh, you're gonna times the first equation by a five. And if I do that, I get 35x, and then five times this negative three is gonna be negative 15y, and five times negative five is gonna be negative 25. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that first equation and I will multiply everything by a five. Now for the second equation, I will multiply everything by a three. All right, so you gotta be careful there. I'm multiplying everything by a three, right? So three times three is gonna be nine X. And then three times positive five, that gives me the positive 15 Y there, which is great. And then three times negative 21 is gonna be negative 60, um, three times negative 21 is gonna be negative 63 here. So equals to negative 63. All right, so this is looking good because the X variables are lined up, the Y variables are lined up, and the constant numbers are lined up on the left, on the right hand side. Okay, now ask yourself, uh, here's my Y variable and my Y variable, what can I do to make sure that the negative 15 and the positive 15 cancel out? Do I add them or do I subtract them? Well, you're gonna add them, right? If you subtracted them, it'd be like negative 15 minus 15, which would give you negative 30y, right? So you want to add them, not subtract them. Okay, so 35 plus nine. What's 35 plus nine? That's gonna be 44x. And the y's will cancel out. And then a negative 25. Uh, this one, you gotta be careful here. It's really negative 25 plus, and then you're adding a negative 63, right? So that's the same thing as negative 25 uh, minus 63, which is gonna be negative 88. And then you can divide both sides by 44. And this works out nice because negative 88 divided by 44 is gonna be negative two. So X equals negative two there. And then finally to finish this off, you wanna go back and uh, if I look at my first equation here, uh, it's gonna be seven times X and X has a value of negative two minus three Y equals to negative five. And that's going to be uh, negative 14 minus 3y equals to negative 5. And now you're solving for y here. Uh, let's bring the negative 14 over. So uh, negative 5 plus 14 is going to be positive 9. So negative 3y equals to positive 9. And then you can divide both sides by 3, negative 3. And uh, y would equal to negative 3 there. So my final answer is going to be negative 2 comma negative 3. All right, so that concludes this homework video guide.